Here we have a diagram of the products table, as well as the two reference tables, suppliers and categories. Each order detail record is linked to a specific product. I would like to create an application with a custom search screen where the user types in a product name and it displays a list of results matching that product name below. Let's go ahead and create a query that will select the data that we would like to show. We can see the results of our query below. This represents the data that I want to show to the user. Let's create this as a stored procedure that accepts one parameter, called name, and filters these products by the product name. We have successfully created our procedure. Let's create a sample query from this procedure. We can see that it is filtering the products correctly. Let's go ahead and create our application using Time App Generator. Let's call this project Custom Search. Let's connect to our database. We will not need to create any data models for our application. Go ahead and press next and press cancel and continue pressing next. Go ahead and press generate. Let's go ahead and log into our app. Notice that the only page available is the home page because we have not added any data models. Let's add a page that will contain a form that will allow the user to type in some search parameters. Click on the project name, press design, switch to the controllers tab, and press new controller. Let's call this controller product search and save the controller. We will add one field to this controller. With the name name. Length 50. Go ahead and save the field. Let's create one form view in this controller. With the ID form1 of type form and label form1. Bind the name field to this view. Finally, let's bind this form onto a page. Copy the form. Switch to the Pages tab. Create a new page called Product Search. Select 
Save the page. Paste the view on the page. Make sure that the startup action command name is set to edit. We would also like to see our application running in a Cloud on Time native app. Press exit. Press settings. And select client and server. Switch to generic app. Press finish. And let's generate the app. We will need to log in. Notice that we have a new product search page. It displays a single field called name, as well as default actions OK and Cancel. We would like to display a list of results underneath the name field. We will need a custom controller that will represent our result set. Open the project designer. And let's create another controller. We will call this controller product result. This time, right click on the controller and press generate from SQL. This utility will replace the definition of the controller based off the columns returned in the result set from an arbitrary SQL script. Let's go ahead and execute our stored procedure. The results seem to be correct. Let's go ahead and define the data controller. Project Designer has created a set of fields, views, actions, and business rules. Let's look at each business rule and see how it works. The first business rule will set the enable result set flag to 1. This will notify the application framework that the next select business rule will return a result set that will represent our data. The next business rule represents the data that we're returning. The next three business rules configure the property prevent default equal to 1 to ensure that the user cannot insert, update, or delete by default. We will need to provide a custom insert, update, and delete implementation for this custom data controller. Let's modify our get data business rule to accept a parameter. This will ensure that the user will be required to specify a name parameter from the search form before they can see a list of results. Go ahead and save the changes. Let's bind the product result grid under the product search form. Right click on the product result controller and press copy. Paste it onto product search. This will create a data view field. Let's bind this field to the form one view. Finally, we need to add an action to product search that will trigger the product result view to refresh and accept the parameter. Under actions, create a new action group of scope form. Create a new action. Command name will be confirm. Command argument will be equal to the name of the data view field. Specify header text of search. We will allow the user to hit the enter key on the keyboard 
to trigger the action. Let's ensure the action only shows up when the form is in edit mode. Finally, let's specify an icon for this action. We will use the icon search from the material icon library. Save the action. Let's see our search form in action. Navigate to the product search page. We can see a data view containing no records underneath the name field. Let's type in something to search by and press enter. You can see the product result has been refreshed with a list of products where the product name starts with S. We can continue searching. Let's make our form more presentable and usable. Double click on the form one view. Let's change the label to search for products. Change the header text to please enter a product name to search. Let's add the shopping cart icon to the form. Save the changes to the view. Next, double click on the category C1. Remove the header text to hide the category bar. Next, double click on the product result data view field. Let's disable the action bar. Finally, we would like the focus to return back to the name field after the user performs the search. We will need to add a business rule that runs after our action. Let's add a new business rule. This JavaScript business rule will run after the command confirm. It will trigger the function $app.input.focus. Save the business rule and run the app. Notice that our form now displays the large text search for products as well as the subtext please enter a product name to search. It shows a shopping cart icon in the top left corner. There is no longer a category bar displayed below. There's also no more action bar displayed on the data view. Let's type in a search. Notice that focus returns back to the name field. We can keep searching for products. Let's select an item from the result grid. Notice that none of the fields are populated. We will need to adjust our get data business rule in order to return the specific product. Double click on the get data business rule under product result controller. We will add another case. The product ID filter value parameter will contain the product ID that we are trying to filter by. In this case, we can run a different sort procedure. We can also return a result set directly in our business rule. I will copy the definition of our stored procedure. And we will filter this result using the filter value of product ID.
go ahead and save the changes. And let's see this in action. Let's search for a product and select the product from the grid. Notice that the values are now populated in the edit form. Notice that if we try to edit the product from this form, the value will not be applied. We'll need to modify the update business rule in order to write that value to the database. Double click on the update business rule and let's implement our update. Save the business rule. Go ahead and press run. Let's search for a product and modify the product name. The product name has been updated. We would also like to display a list of order details associated with each product. We can use a standard data controller based off a model. Let's exit the project designer. Click model. Let's create a model for order details. Save the default model and press finish. Let's open up the project designer. We would like to bind order details onto the product result form. Switch the controllers tab, right click on order details and press copy. Paste the controller on product result. Let's ensure that order details is being filtered by product ID. Finally, bind order details data view field to the edit form. Let's see it in action. Notice that our product result form now has a list of order details associated with that product. Because this controller was created using a model based off a table, all create, read, update, and delete operations are automatically handled by the application framework.